You understand everything in here? Absolutely. Okay. Break. We can't. We take the break off and go to St. Louis. If with the, with the break, it's a full slab. Okay. Uh, baby backs can only come from the loin. Country styles are slices of this. Once you slice, your skin comes off. And once you slice it, then you and you cut the chine bone off, and you slice it on an angle. So you'll basically have two big pieces. Now, what I'm also seeing in, in a lot of the uh, grocery stores now, which kind of makes me a little bit nuts. They're starting to do this. I sell as a belly. They really know how to market this freaking grocery store. And you're selling them like this. I'd be mad. Oh, you're telling me. Right. They're, they're taking the chine bone off. Okay. Here. But here, they're just basically they're kind of just cracking it. You're selling it like a whole piece like that. Now, this would be awesome if you were going to put it in your sauce. You know, if you're making spaghetti sauce, if you leave it, to, leave it whole like that, that's one thing. Yeah. Italian secret. Yeah, that's what my father used to do all the time. Yep. Neck bones in the sauce. Skin in the sauce. Now, then they used to fight over who was going to eat it. <laughs> really fight. Mm -hmm. Let me know on the big skin. Is it profitable for you to take all the skin, just fry it up, and make it your own? Oh, oh if I was on a street festival, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You could do it in a fine dining. You could then crack it up, throw it over a salad. Yep. Mm -hmm. Notice you don't have a, you're not cutting off a little bit. Yeah, it comes down pretty good, yeah. Comes down plus more so whatever here is good. Most of this stuff is all gonna be ground up. Okay, this has to be ground up. It's almost like where the marrow is just in the meat itself. <laughs> okay, the whole shoulder. Really nice to roast the whole shoulder if you can get them. If you can get the whole shoulder. That's top and bottom. But and I don't know. One of my last students said that he, he had no problem getting them. But I, I always seem to have trouble getting them. So maybe it's just my purveyor. Parts of the country, too. Yeah, if you were down south, you'd get that in a heartbeat. Yeah. We don't have any problems getting it back home, but you know we've got Smithfield packing down the road that kills 35,000 hogs a day. So. Harvest. Harvest. <laughs> Temple, and the third one comes about one third of the way down the back. Okay. It does a pretty good job. 1.25 amps will knock them out for about the 20 to 30 seconds. Have you ever been to a factory where? Because I know Smithfield does it, but you, have you ever personally seen where they gas them? Yes. Smithfield gasses them now. No, I never seen them gas. Bob Strub with that and wax them. It's not in no. Your mom? Are you sure? I suppose it doesn't work. That work. Yeah, some bitch sticks his teeth into it. Okay, now come in, I'm going to take these uh, neck bones out, these couple little pieces of ribs here. Now, if you had a pork dish and you had these bones, you know, you could roast, I mean, this wouldn't be a stock that you'd use for anything but a pork dish. So you could roast these off, because I know I've made French onion soup with them when I didn't have enough of my other bones at my house, not in a restaurant. So you could use them, you know, you could also use them to fortify like a, like a beef shoe or something like that, or excuse me, a pork shoe, like if you're doing tenderloins and you need a sauce, pork tenderloins, which you'll see tomorrow. And rice all day. Now, one of the things you want to be very careful with if you ever decide you want to do pulled pork with the picnic, see this vessel right here? Ooh, okay. that's a big one. That's a big one. And that runs deep in there. Uh, so you want to be very careful with that. You want to make sure that you get that out of there. It's a, it's a vessel, a blood vessel? It's a blood vessel, yeah. 
make sure you get that out of there because I want to tell you, there's nothing nastier than getting that in your sandwich. Chewing a big old rubber straw. Uh, Worse than chilling. So you love to see how deep it's going? This is it right here. Speaks from experience about getting it to sandwich. Absolutely. I took this on the bus. Good deep deep bus. Good portion of the sandwich right there, too, you know? If you don't know what's in there, if you think you're just buying, you see, here's a Christmas situation where this guy was buying pork by price alone. He saw picnics at 89 cents and he saw pork butts at $1.40. All right, and they said both of them said shoulder. One said shoulder picnic, one said shoulder butt. But he didn't do his homework to realize that this is, this, there's more of this down inside of there. All right, and that ended up in one of his sandwiches. I tell him not to be out of business about three months later. Grapes in the pudding. Okay, I'm gonna come here and take this off. You get to a point in your life where you, you make it a priority in your life to help people. And then, like, I have pretty much spent most of my life trying to help people. And then you get to a point where you give up because they ask you for advice and then they don't listen. So, and that's kind of normal, all right? Everybody does that one time or another. But then you say, if you get fed up, you say, you know what? I think it's a great idea. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> See what happens. Okay? I don't think you should do it that way. Like I mentioned to you once before, I don't think you should do that. Oh, well, yeah, but I can do this. I can do it. Go ahead. All right, now. He's out of business. Picnic. The picnic is the only primal that will always be sold with the skin on it. Always. The ham could be, but often not. Often enough, not. It would be half off. If you're getting a boneless ham, it would be all off. But the picnic, always. 100 thousands percent of the time, always. Is there, is there a reason? That's it's a cheap cut of meat. Uh, it roasts really well with the skin on it. So mm. it's probably nice worth it. They don't want to get too involved with it. There's a lot of bone in there. There's a lot of connective tissue in there. And, of course, the skin on the inside. Now we're going to go to work. So start to pay attention here, really close, because now I'm going to do what you're going to do on your bench. First I'm going to make my pork butt equal to what you have on your table. Throw a lot of this away right now. Okay. Alright, All right, let, me, let me bring this down so it's uh, equal to what you have. Just a little bit of trimming is really all I'm doing. And plus I'm going to take the skin off, because you don't have skin on yours either. No. No. So, quick question while you're yep. doing this. The last restaurant I worked at, we used to smoke, I don't know, 30, 40 pork butts a week. Uh -huh. So, essentially, would you say it'd be, because uh, all we do is just smoke them, right. and then we'd let them rest, and then we just pull them all, just yeah. pull all of it. Now, would that be cheaper just to do the picnic? Is it not going to mess up the flavor or anything like it's that? It's not going to be cheaper. Not going to be cheaper. Because once you cut out all the bone, once you take out that, that uh, vein, once you take off that skin, in terms of weight, and what you're going to end up throwing away, especially if you don't use those bones, you've basically spent the same amount of money on that as you have over here. Now, if you need because the bones, labor. yeah, labor, labor, and, labor and waste. Okay, labor and waste. Okay, here I got a bone. When we're done, that might weigh three quarters of a pound, maybe. Here, I take all the bone out of here. Take the skin off because you can't use the skin. Okay, take the connective tissue out that you don't want to use. I bet you I got close to two pounds. Or better. Gotcha. Or better. Right. So I paid 99 cents for two pounds of stuff I had to throw away. So add that two dollars back on, yeah. divide it by the weight to get your price per pound, and you're going to find this is cheaper. Right. Uh, this is cheaper. And, and if you have a use for those bones, yeah. like if you can roast them and put them in something or use them to fortify, then that might be different because then it's not waste. Yeah. But if you're just chucking them, you're throwing out money. They are too lazy. And the only thing in there you gotta worry about is just that bone right there. And it land. pulls right out. When you're pulling it, if you're smoking these things and you're pulling the pork, when this thing is done, if 
if it's completely 100% done, you should be able to just grab both corners of that yeah. bone. Pull right out. That's when you know it's ready. Right? If you have to struggle with it or use your knife, put it back in the oven. Right? We have a shredder. We have a pork shredder. Okay. That was good fat. You could use it. We have pork shredder. <laughs> ready? Now, how long does it take you? To, what did you say? 40 pounds? How much? We did 40. We had a big outdoor smoker. We did about 40 a week. 40 butts. 40 butts a every week. week. Yeah. 40 butts. 40 butts. Okay. So, uh, and how long did it take you to do that? Uh, we smoked them. Oh, uh, no, to pulling. To pulling pork. To pulling. Oh, uh, we had two people doing it, you know, for a half a shift. For a half a shift? Yeah. <laughs> Four hours? Yeah, just constant. <laughs> I have a machine that does 400 pounds in an hour and a half. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'll throw it up on the, on the screen. It's, it's the coolest thing. 400 pounds of pulled pork, one and a half hours. And boom, <laughs> perfectly. Boom. <laughs> as fast as you can drop it in the chute, it comes out the bottom, done. Yeah. No, because we had guys that would leave like big chunks like that and the fat around it. <laughs> Considering the amount that we did for Rib Fest in the Dutchess County Fair, what would we end up doing? 2,000 pounds of pork? 2,000 pounds of pork, 2,000 pounds of brisket. 2,000 pounds in one week. Okay, you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, pork butt. Fat side down on the table. Fat side down. There's going to be a blade bone here that comes to a point. All right, so I have bone on both hands here. All right, comes to a point. When you get, what I want you to do is I want you to lift up the pork butt and look on both sides, depending on which side of the animal you have, you're looking for this rounded shape section. Let me scrape that bone dust off of there. You probably won't have this on there. Let me get that out there. This is what you'll be looking for, this rounded one. It's called a blade bone. It's called a blade section. Okay? Now, depending on which side of the animal you have. Now, this morning mine was over on this side. Now it's on this side. Get to that side of the animal. Right? It's a natural seam here. Pay attention to this little box, this little invisible box that I just made here. All right? Watch how many times I move this piece of meat to do what I need to do. I found the seam, cut the seam, follow it right down. Follow the seam around. Remember, it's a, it's a round muscle. It's round. I gotta follow it. Zero times. Didn't move it. Didn't move it. You shouldn't have to move it either. Okay. One more step. Lift it back up again. And now you see another seam that starts right here. Basically what you're doing is you're peeling this whole top flap right off the pork bar. Okay? Mm -hmm. I just lifted it and I just kept rolling it out. Am I still inside my box? Yeah. Yep. I just moved it. Okay. I just saved like five, six minutes of labor. Because everybody's going to do it. That's true. Okay? Believe me. I've boned out thousands of these pork buns. Thousands. I always find, I always look for a faster way to do it. All right, so let me recap this. Give me another pork butt. Okay. Fat side up or down? Down. Uh, fingertips point? Yep. Find two bones? Got it. All right, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever. Lift it up. Oh, down, rounds on this side. Yep. Do we have an extra one? Okay. I'm looking at it. My box, get in there, follow that seam, peel it right out. Roll it right out. Hold it up and then peel the top layer right off. You're trying to protect all of this right here. That's what we're protecting. All of that nice, beautiful, solid roast that runs right down the middle. Okay, take that back. Now, once I've got this thing 
take it apart. I'll do just a little bit of trimming here. I do, please do not want you to denude this. Please do not denude this. I need a little fat on there. See, this is what I'm protecting right here. So I've got this like this flat edge here with the grandma skin on it. Okay, I just want to look at this, find that little seam. Let's cut that right off. Alright, now shape it. Shape it. Very simple. Three strings. One, two, three. One in the middle. Nice and tight. They're going to look a little sloppy. It's just the nature of learning. Two fingers apart, Chef? Three. You know what? No, don't go by that rule today. The rule today is three strings. I think I can handle that. E evenly though, still but, evenly, but, you think? Or, or you got to look at it, yeah. Yeah, I don't want you, I don't want any sloppy stuff. Yeah, I don't want, yeah, I don't want one, two, three. Right. It's pretty even, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Chef Levy used to say, make it nice or make it twice. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> okay, this is true. Now, this grandma skin here, Let's get rid of that. We don't want that in our trim. Right. Get this done first, then we'll come back and we'll work on the on the uh, Hurt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, that's